we're going to start off getting centered. Just get focused. Take a second to focus on your breath, right? We go from breathing sort of subconsciously, and now all of a sudden, we got to switch to actually paying attention to it. So it takes a second. So we're going to just give ourselves a minute to settle because the more settled you feel, whatever position you're in, whether you're sitting, standing, like me, then you can start to feel the ground and sort of let your body sort of get grounded and feel that you're settling and you're not fighting or resisting or tensing up anything. Then your breath is just going to sort of start to settle down too and breathe more into your belly. Okay, so if you can just start to feel that transition. Maybe you can not fight it and not try to go up into your chest with your first breath, but just sort of allow the breath to expand into your belly and just let it happen versus try to control it right away. And you just kind of let that pattern get restored down here. Sometimes it helps to just initially focus on an exhale. So let's all just do a long breath out. You should feel like ribs came down. You just settled a little bit. Let's put our hands on our sides. And now we're going to try to breathe into these hands. So I'm going to kind of stick the blades of my hands right in the middle of my hips and my ribs. So right in this soft spot. And that's what we want to learn to fill in with our breath is being able to push out. All right. Those of you that work with me on training, we work a lot on this because it's such a huge part of stability in terms of connecting the ribs to the hips and having a fixed core that we can move and be strong from, right? A lot of times if we're breathing up into our chest and we suck everything in, then there's a lot of potential to move around in there while we're holding things or lifting things, and that's where we can become vulnerable to injury, okay? So we got to realize there's a lot of applications for this breath. If we can just learn a little bit about not just breathing this way, but really breathing out. So give yourself some good pressure here, and then try to just, without even breathing, just try to push your hands out to the side, like you're making a wall between the ribs and the hips here. Okay, and it gets a little more flat. The belly's gonna kind of flatten out a little bit and spread. And then you may even feel some filling in the low back, and that's that 360 breath we want. Okay, now if I breathe into the shape, I get even more pressure. And then I can let it all go, and it softens again. And then can we restore that shape with our next breath? And then let it go. I'm going to do that three more times. Use your hands as targets. Do a couple more, breathing in through the nose. Looking for no dents in that can, right? We don't want any creases or pockets where there's no fill. Let it go. So this is actually a little exercise you can do anytime. I'm gonna put my hand on my low back, see how that's feeling. And let it go. And now we can do hands free. Can you feel those positions all moving? And let it go. So it's like we're calibrating our brain to get really focused on that area, okay? All right, I'm gonna get the spine moving, guys, because it's really important. Even though our focus is gonna be a lot on the hips today, we got if we don't have any awareness of where our spine is, it's gonna be a little tough. So I want you guys to just mainly focus on flexion. So we're gonna go up into this sort of rainbow shape, all right? And I'm a little limited right now because I'm dealing with sort of a back strain here on my right side, so you'll, so you'll notice it's a little hard for me to quite get tucked. There's a lot of pain here still. So I'm just being a little extra gentle, taking a little bit longer to get in positions. And then, of course, breathe there. So I'm here. I'm going to take three big breaths in and out. So we're going to really focus on that breathing into that back and in between the shoulder blades here. So we can go three big breaths in. Hold the top of that breath. Push through the floor. And then long exhale, you're going to stay in the shape. Again, big breath in. Hold the top of that breath. Long exhale out. Last one. We're going to take another big breath in. Hold your breath. See if you can lift your knees an inch off the ground and keep holding and keep pushing. Breathe out. Hold your knees up. Two more breaths. 
getting some core work in right away. Push the floor away, just the knees, just an inch. Don't lift your knees any higher. One more time, big breath in. And let it go. And we come back down. Good job, guys. Good. All right, we're going to get some rotations in now, okay? So we're going to be rotating the spine relative to a hip that's not moving, okay? So even though the hips aren't are stable here, we're going to be rotating our body. You're still going to have to be aware of your hips not moving, okay? So we're going to sit back here to where the hips can kind of stay locked down, the low back can stay locked down. And we're just going to do these thread the needles, which we do quite often in this class. We're going to reach through. Okay, we're going to come down as low as we can. And then again, we've got a little bit of this rainbow shape here. I want you to reach overhead. And again, you to focus on breathing into your low back here. <sighs> Try to get as much of a twist as you can with this hand. We're reaching overhead. We're thinking about breathing through here, breathing into that low back. Breathing into your hip. <sighs> we're trying to let this area settle down onto our heels. Long breath out. More time. Good. All right, now we're going to switch. This time's going overhead. I'm going to thread the needle this way now, trying to get this shoulder as best as I can. So I'm getting a little twist, reaching overhead, three big breaths here, and letting it go. Two more, big breath in. Let it go. Last one. Big breath in with that low back. Hold the top of that breath just for a minute. Let that fill stay. And then we're going to do a long, slow breath out. Easing back down. Good. Now we're going to tip forward to where our knees are up. Vertical, okay, sorry. The femur is perpendicular to the floor. Okay, so we're gonna be here. Now we're gonna thread the needle again. You should be able to twist a little bit more now. All right, we've got a little more freedom. Hands here, we're gonna open up, push the floor away. Three big breaths here. Breathing in through here. Two more. Long exhale out. Might get a little more range with each breath. Big breath in. Try to breathe right here. Hold the top of that breath. Hold it, hold it. Let it all go. Now we come down. We're going to get three reps. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And we come down. Good job, guys. We're going to switch. Okay, we're going to reach through, try to get your body rotated as far as you can. Okay, so you can see, got a big twist through here. For me, this is where it's really stiff and tight. So I'm going to try to be breathing into my ribs, low back, really focusing on that lower breath down into here. Okay, so big breath in through here. Exhale out. Two more. Big breath in. And let it go. One more time. Big breath in. Hold the top of that breath. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And let it go. Three reps, guys. Here we go. Breathe in. Breathe out. Get as far as you can. Make sure that breath is big. <sighs> Trying to create space and mobility in there with our breath. All right, we're going to finish off one more core activation piece. We're going to need a lot of core today, and I'll show you why when we kind of get started. So again, hands, you want to be nice and flat. Elbow pits slightly forward, okay? But don't let your hands curl up like that. Try to keep the hands flat, okay? Push the shoulder away. Think about the 
the ribs pushing through, okay? Holding ourselves up. We've got pretty strong arms now. Now all we're doing is driving our toes on the floor so you feel your core kick going. All right, if you guys just push your toes down, okay, really push those toes down before you even lift your knees. If I just push through my chest and my toes, I should feel my core kick on already. Now we just lift the knees up a little bit. We keep the feet, to put toes pushed down, keep the arms pushed in, three big breaths. Just reminding ourselves we're strong and stable. And we come down. All right, guys, good. All right, so we're going to get the hips warmed up now a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go into <clears throat> one foot forward and one foot back. All right, <clears throat> and we're going to be in this sort of side kneeling lunge position. All right, so I'm going to have one foot sort of turned out. <clears throat> this knee is straight down. Hips, we have to tuck. Okay, what often happens here in this position is we get sort of down for it. And I'm not even going to do that right now because it really kind of lights up my back a little bit. So I'm being even more cautious of trying to keep this pubic bone pulled up. That's going to create a pretty big stretch here in my hip. Okay, so I'm going to go back to facing you guys. Got the feet turned out. I'm going to slide this foot out a little bit. We're going to work on stretching through here a little bit. Now we're just going to go forward. We're going to load this leg. Core is stable. And then we're going to come back. I'm just going to do that a few times. So remember, everything that we're doing now is core plus something. So you have to remind yourself that all that breath work we did this morning, trying to get that 360 fill through here, we're trying to add that skill to whatever other skill we're doing. Okay. So it's always going to be a two and one, maybe even a three and one if you think I have to pay attention to my breathing. I might give you other cues like what's going on with this foot and ankle. Can we keep that foot stable and keep it from collapsing, right? So I'm going to be trying to focus on moving through this hip. So I've got to keep this stable. I'm keeping my glute squeeze in the back. It's these little details, guys, that give us so much from something so simple. And that way we don't have to overdo it to try to feel something because we're just already working through really good positions, through something simple like just getting good 360 breaths. Lining things up from here to here is going to expose the joints to the positions that we need. Just like that. Good, now we're gonna switch sides, putting this knee down, putting this foot out. Okay, <clears throat> now we're gonna go into this side. So again, take a second if you need to, make sure that pubic bone is tucked up. That's going to make you squeeze your glutes on both sides. So really squeeze. Now we're going to load in. Depending on how much ankle range of motion you have, you may have to slide that foot out if you feel like you can't go very far. Or if you feel really tight through here, just don't let go of that core. Okay, sometimes we feel so much discomfort or stiffness in our hip that we just break immediately at the spine. And then we're teaching our spine to not be stable that way. So just work in. If you can't go very far, that's fine. You could do little ones like this. You can play around with where you want your ankle. If you want more ankle mobility, then you're going to want to get that foot a little closer. Just like that, you can move it around. Just trying to think of getting this inside leg to move towards the floor. So I'm thinking of trying to get that there. I'm going to do one more. Good job, guys. Good. All right. We're going to get into a side plank here, okay? One of our very easy ways to get this hip, all right? So we're going to get knee stacked. Right now, I have sort of a flex in my hips, okay? But what I'm going to do is as I lift, I want to extend my hip forward and try to get rid of that hip back position. I want to try to drive my hips forward. I'm actually going to lift this leg off to activate this glute. Now I'm going to try to keep this knee hovering in the air. I'm going to come down, tap the floor, and come up. I'm trying to keep this connected. Remember, we got always got multiple things happening, right? So I'm thinking about keeping pressure in my core. I don't want to be able to push my fingers in. Or do that as best as I can. Best we can. If you have to, keep your feet connected. If you just feel like that's helping you be more balanced. 
We're going to get three more. One more time. Hold the top. Focus on your breathing here, guys. Push in. Ribs down, hips tucked. Two breaths. One more time. And then we come back down. Good job, you guys. Good. So we're getting these hips kind of warmed up and ready for more. Okay, side plank. Knees stacked to start. Again, try to think about ribs stacked over your hips. So hips are tucked a little bit. Okay, ribs come down. Now I should have a little bit easier time filling. I'm going to lift. See if I can lift my knee. See if I can lift my foot. Okay, whatever way you can do that would be good. We don't have to do the full version. Okay, we're going to lift our knee up. Try to hold. You're using a lot of this glute here. Using a lot of this core. Try to breathe. Pressure here. We want this to be pretty firm. You can tap your stomach to wake it up a little bit. Bring your mind to it. Help you stay connected to the muscles. Now we add movement. We try to keep the glute on. Keep the core pressure, and suddenly what seems pretty straightforward, there's a lot of skills being practiced here. I'm going to get three more. Reloading the shoulder, holding the top. We want to own this shape. We're going to breathe here. Two more breaths. And we ease it back down. Good job, guys. Good. All right. Next, we're going to zero in on our hips now. Okay, so we've kind of got everything warmed up, and now I want you guys to really focus a lot more on your hips here. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to have the right knee down. We've got our hands down. We're going to extend the left leg back behind us, and we're going to do a lot of pivoting through our hip here. Okay, so I'm basically turning and then coming back through. Okay, so I'm pushing the floor away from me and then I'm pulling the floor back. So you really want that knee to be fixed and you want to feel the weight of your knee in the ground. So we're rotating and then we're pulling it back. I want you guys to try to work on squeezing the glute through this whole process. Again, you need some core stability here because the only thing really moving that we're trying to move is our hip joint. So I'm pulling through, pushing it back, trying to make sure I can breathe, easing things back, nice and slow. So I'm resisting coming down a little bit, pushing the floor away, easing it back down as far as I can, pushing the floor away. You should feel like there's a lot going on in that glute. Easing it back down. Try not to suck your stomach in or breathe up into your chest. Push the floor away. Let's hold here. Breathe. Ease it back down. Keep that low back under control. Breathe in here. Almost trying to push that hip out. Good. All right, we switch sides. Okay, this leg back. Again, pushing the floor away. Easing it back down. Imagine you're doing all this with your hip, not your arms. Your arms are there for balance, but I'm not pushing myself with my arms. Ease it back down. Breathe into that belly. Ease it back. Then we ease it back. Push it away. I think breathe where you feel like you need it. Sometimes you can breathe in on the way up, breathe out on the way down. You might feel you need to do the opposite. Breathe down here and exhale on the way up. Go with what makes you feel like you're gaining some control of this hip. Okay, we're going to hold the top. Three big breaths here. Push that floor away as hard as you can. Breathe into your low back. Ease it down. Control, control. Use your hip. Push the floor into your knee. 
and back down. Good job, guys. Good. All right, we're switching back to the other side. All right, now we're going to lose one piece of stability here. So we had two hands down. Now we're going to lift the opposite side of the leg we're lifting. Okay, so I'm going to keep my right knee down. I'm going to get that left leg back. I have it on the floor back here. I'm going to lift my arm. Okay, now I'm going to try to lift that leg up. I'm going to try to do it again, pushing the floor away, pulling it back down. So we've got shoulder involved now. It's going to be much harder not to arch your back, guys. You're going to want to lift your chest. You're going to want to arch your back to help here. Try to remember, breathe into that core. Make this a core exercise and a hip exercise. Keep the arms straight. Keep the legs straight in the back. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your shoulder. Try to breathe. Rotate through that hip. Remember, push the floor away, then pull the floor to you. One more. Right here, pull the floor through your knee, back to your body, and we switch. Okay, so we're taking away balance and trying to see if we can keep the control, keep the core stability. Okay, so if we go to all fours, put that hand right between your ribs and hips. Remember, this is really almost the ultimate goal here is can we always bring the core with us, right? Our breath with us. Okay, I've got that fixed position here. Remember, ribs and hips now aren't really going to move. They're going to rotate, but they're not going to flex or anything like that. I've got this foot back. I've got this arm up. I'm trying to think about my core just swiveling as my hip moves. The only thing really trying to move here is mostly through my hip joint. Breathing in, pushing that floor away. Ease it back down. Remember, keep the toes in the into the ground. That'll give you some extra balance and some extra core stability. I'm going to do three more. Two more. Last one. Hold here, try to breathe in and out. <sighs> control, 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 control. Good job, you guys, good. All right, it's gonna get harder now. Now we're doing two points of contact, okay? We had two different ones, so we're doing same side, okay? So we had opposite arm, opposite leg. Now we're gonna do same side, all right? So I'm gonna lean on this right knee. I'm going to lean on this right shoulder. I want to have those toes dug in, okay, because that's going to help keep my core tight. Notice that if you guys push down hard enough, you should get a little core activation. I'm going to lean on this side. I'm going to try to get my right left leg back, excuse me, left arm up. I'm going to try to balance. This one's pretty tough. You might need to get your hands out a little further. And then we're going to try to rotate and come down through that hip, keeping that core on, pushing the floor away. Coming back down slow, trying to stay over our hands and knees. This one's much more challenging. Then we push the floor away. And then we ease it back down. Try to feel it through your hip. So you want to try to get the knee pretty perpendicular. So if you guys are too spread out, like I'm a little too spread out, you might start to feel like you're not having enough weight back on your knee. So make sure you feel most of the weight going through here, okay? And then your hand's just there for a little balance. So don't lean forward when you are rotating, okay? <sighs> Keep the weight on your foot. Keep the weight on your knee, and that will help you feel this. <sighs> Ease it back. <sighs> feel those toes dug in. Couple more. Ease it back down. Last one. Ease it back down. And we switch. All right, guys, good. Remember, these are getting a little more challenging, but you felt how stable you were in the earlier progressions. 
So that's what we're still looking for, okay? We're just getting more challenged. Okay, breathe into that core. Okay, dig those toes in. Make sure you're settled back onto your knee. Arm goes up. Try to balance here. Feel your foot. Feel that breath. Now go slow on the way back. Keep the pressure in your foot. Keep the pressure in your foot. Keep the pressure on your knee. Don't lose it. Keep the pressure. Don't go too quick. Keep the weight through your foot and knee. Ease it back. Try to twist towards the floor as much as you can. So this hip, this hip, guys, is coming down and rotating towards that knee. Push the floor away through your knee. But you can't do that if you don't have that pressure. Keep the pressure through your toes. Keep that back glute squeezed. Keep that back leg straight as best you can. Lot to focus on here. Again, a lot of times it's the stuff that's not moving that we're focused on the most. Reaching through those fingertips, reaching through those toes in the back, squeezing your glutes. Two more. And we come down. Good job, guys. A lot of work today. If you're doing this right, really focusing on being stable, being stable through the shoulder. All right, good. We're going to ease up to standing. We're going to finish off here. We're just about finished. We're going to get into a split position. And I realize now that you guys not be able to see me here. So I'm going to go over because I see there's a big glare in the camera. So I'm going to go <laughs> here. Hold on here. All right. But that's okay. We'll go about here. All right, guys. So. We're gonna get one foot forward, one foot back, okay? I want you guys to kind of look for those hips to tuck, all right? Again, we're really focused on those toes. You guys are starting to realize how important it has to get good toe mobility to be able to bend through your toes and really feel like you can put some weight on those back feet, on that back foot, okay? Glutes on, the reason that glutes on is because those toes are dug in. And you can actually drive through the floor, through your toes, squeeze your butt. Tuck those hips. All right, now we're going to hinge forward. Okay, to get, I apologize for the glare here. Try to get over here. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to hinge forward. Arms are going to be out. Here's our airplane position. Breathing in. Remember, we're trying to stay connected from here to here. Okay, we're not rounding our back. So if you did that, come back up. Reset, head back, arms out. You're gonna go down. We're gonna look like we're flying a plane a little bit, but our hips are gonna move. We're gonna rotate through here. And then we're gonna push the floor away through our foot. And we're gonna come back. So we're in a split position now. Not quite on one leg yet. Push the floor away. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Squeeze your fists. Keep that back foot down into the ground. Keep your back flat. And you just look like an airplane flying through the sky. Rotating, internally rotating. Knees internally rotating on that front leg. Now we're externally rotating the hip, driving the floor away from us. The knee is always out here. Squeezing our glutes. Trying to pay attention to our breathing. If you put your hands here now, you should feel the core feels like a cylinder all the way around. Keeping that pressure through that midline. One more time. Then we come back. Come back up. You should feel like you're still loaded through the hip. And now we switch. Okay. Right foot forward. Left foot back. <clears throat> okay, so our hips are level, ribs are down. Again, let's fill our core first. Okay, so remember, push the hands out. That diaphragm is going to move down, push the ribs apart. You should feel like a spread happens here. We're looking for solid walls here. 
side side back solid now we tip forward to our hip okay our hips actually going to move back and flex now i got a lot of load through this hip this leg my back leg's a little bit like a kickstand and now i'm going to rotate Now I'm going to rotate here. Try not to move our shoulders. Try to keep our shoulders like fixed wings. Foot is stable. Back foot stable. Pushing through both feet evenly. If you feel really unstable here, if you feel like, oh, I can't breathe, oh, then put your hands here. Make sure you're getting that fill here. Push into your hands. If I push hands into my torso, I should be pushing back through my midline, push back on those hands. It's totally fine to practice this way first. Do so you feel like you've got your core involved? As soon as you feel locked in here and you've got this anchor, lifting the arms out isn't gonna feel as challenging. I'm gonna do a few more of these guys. We worked hard to get here to all those progressions on the floor, two more. Rotating through that hip, trying to keep our back flat. Really good drill for the hips, core, back, knees, ankles, everything. Ease it back. And we'll land and come up. And remember, we should be here. <clears throat> not here, right? Everything's stacked, okay? So just for a last visual real quick, when you guys are setting this up, if you do any of these, whether you're on the floor, you're doing, I wanna be stacked here, we wanna keep the hips always stacked, okay? That'll allow you to get that pressure here. The minute you arch your back, you're not gonna be able to get that fill through here as much. It's gonna be much more challenging. Okay, so always remember, we wanna try to keep that down as much as we can and use the diaphragm in there to get a lot of pressure down low into our sacrum and our low belly, get that pelvic floor kind of linked up with the diaphragm and you should start to feel much more stable when you're doing these hinge moves, okay? All right, guys, hopefully you can practice and we're gonna try to build on this next weekend to where we actually get onto one leg and do that, okay? <clears throat> so. It's helpful to respect the progression and really try to, to build this as a craft, really try to master each little piece. That way, when you really get up to these more difficult positions, you feel a little more prepared and you're not just compensating, holding your breath, straining, shaking, suffering through it. You actually feel like you can feel your feet. You can feel your hips, your core. You feel that your breath is there. That mindfulness stays intact in each step. Okay, that's our goal. That's how we get the most out of our movement, and that's how you guys sustain this as a position that you can use and help yourself heal, stay healthy with your hips, knees, ankles, and then it should transfer to the rest of your day because you basically re-patterned and retrained your body how to move properly. Okay, so it's like hopefully even though it was just 30 minutes today, you've given your brain enough to work with that it's like, hey, I know how to move my hip a little better. I know how to move my ankle, my knee, my low back. So we're doing much more than just this 30 minutes, okay? We're priming the system for the rest of the day.